And now, without further ado, Mark, you can introduce one of your favourite men in the universe, because I think you just do it better than I would. Well, shall I, say, shall I tell you something about the film first, or shall I just say, ladies would, and gentlemen... It would be rude to keep him hanging on the phone from New York any longer than he is. OK, William Friedkin. Hello, Mark. How are you guys doing? Very good. How are you? Good. So, so it's I, interesting to, uh, to listen to 15 straight reviews of X-Men. That, that was uh, really the highlight <laughs> of my day. Hey, uh, <laughs> William, this is Simon in the studio. I'd just like to point out, it's my show, and Mark is just my movie reviewer, OK? okay. But we get it the right way around. All and, right, so. But it, it is fantastic to have you on the show, and appreciate appreciate you talking to us today. Mark has seen your movie, so before we hear uh, what he has to say about it, let's hear your version, William. My version of what? Of your new movie. We, we need to know about it because only Mark amongst us has seen it. Well, you know, I, I don't think it's um, going to serve any purpose to describe the plot. I don't really like to hear the plot of anything, including something like Hamlet. If you reduce it to the plot, it's just a load of tosh, isn't it? Okay, what, what would you like to tell us about it before we hear what Mark has to say it's about it? It's a very intense uh, piece of work. I think Mark will agree. It's, uh, it kind of captures the spirit that I feel um, rampant, not only in the United States, but elsewhere where I travel, especially in Europe, of kind of irrational fear and paranoia. Although it uh, specifically deals with five characters in a little town uh, just outside of Oklahoma City. I think, uh, did you get the idea when you went to see the play, I think? Yeah, uh, the play immediately struck me as being very cinematic, very disturbing and provocative, which I think are two reasons to make a film. There, there may not be too many more. Uh, a third, of course, would be just sheer entertainment. Uh, but, but then at a certain point, it, when you have made enough films, you want to you, you try and take the audience somewhere they haven't been. So you wanted to make a movie out of it. I think your other half thought you were mad. Well, that, you know, that's what the... Pre- You've obviously read Roger Ebert's review... <laughs> Uh, well, I had Mark read it out to me over the phone from Cannes this morning. Yeah, no, I mean, it was. she loved the play and thought it was, uh, uh, when we saw it together, and she thought it was uh, very powerful. But then, you know, I, I don't know that anyone uh, who, let's say, saw X-Men at 11 o'clock last night yeah. would, would look at this play and say, uh, geez, there's a wonderful film in that. Uh, OK, Mark, we're going to turn to you for a, a little bit of the plot. I understand that William doesn't want to do that, so you can, and, uh, and tell us what you think. Well, the way I'd describe it is I'd say it's, you know, it's an intense, psychosexual, paranoid thriller. And uh, it, I think it's, it, it's the purest work that Friedkin's done in many years. It what do you, what do you mean by goes, that? Well, because it's completely uncompromising. It's not a film that makes any kind of concessions to a mainstream audience. And I think it's very important that when I saw it, it completely divided the audience. Some people walked out because they just couldn't take it. Some people, like me, thought this is you know, a masterpiece. And funnily enough, I was out with uh, Steve Woolley, the producer, last night, and he agreed with me about how intense and how good it was. But it's cut people right down the middle. I think it's got terrific performances. I've never seen Ashley Judd on this kind of form before. Really, really intense performance and it's one of those it's a play about descent into self-generating paranoia that takes the audience to a very crazy place and then just keeps going it's genuinely frightening it's genuinely involving it's stripped down and you know brutal and raw in a way that i think that all of uh, friedkin's best work is and i mean i have to say as somebody who's a lifelong Friedkin fan. I thought it was right back on form, right up there with, you know, his best work. And I, I've told Billy as much as uh, it's. I was just absolutely chuffed as nuts by it. And personally, it's the thing I've enjoyed most here in Cannes this year. Well, what can I say, Mark? That was I couldn't have said it better myself. I was hoping that. At the very least, it would have a reaction like the one you've described that was similar to the first performance of Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring as a ballet in 1913 in Paris, where the audience literally got up and started screaming at each other and at the performers and pounding each other over the head, (laughs) and and it was an out-and-out riot in the theater. I mean, th- how many films are you going to see, or even plays today, that are going to excite you to uh, any sort of an emotional pitch? Uh, there was a time in American theater when this would happen. There was a play in the 1930s called Awake and Sing, 
by Clifford Odets. And it was a time when the labor movement was on the rise. And at the end of this play, the actors on the stage all come forward and yell, strike, strike, strike. And the whole theater audience, for every performance, echoed it, uh, echoed uh, the cry of strike. Now, we don't have that kind of theater anymore. We don't have it in cinema. Uh, people sit back. They might enjoy what they're watching or not, uh, but they don't get emotionally involved. And that, and that was something that I really wanted to try to do. William, what, what is it in the film that would make someone want to stand up and leave the cinema, which Mark said happened at his screening? Oh, oh I don't know. I think audiences today are a bit more skittish. You know, they don't expect to be moved on that level. They, they don't expect to, to be challenged or provoked. No. I, I don't imagine anyone, you know, sitting at, at the average CGI $200 million uh, negative cost film uh, wants anything more out of it than to be entertained and, and maybe see a bit of skin or something. Mark, wh wh why were people walking out, do you know? Well, I think they were because basically the movie is completely full on. It, uh, it doesn't sort of do any of the things that you'd expect conventional, uh, nice narrative to do. It, like I said, it starts going into a point of paranoid conspiracy man, and then it just simply keeps going. What most cinema does nowadays is kind of wimps out and kind of gives you a breathing space and doesn't really follow through on its convictions. The, the, the thing that I really liked about Bug, and I would challenge anybody to disagree with this, whether you like the film or not, it sets itself a task and then it does it. And it was to get people to walk out of films is, is quite something. Because m mainly, you know, as we heard from when people talking about the X-Men or people talking about Da Vinci Code, you can not like a movie or not be very engaged with it, but just sit there to the end for two and a half hours. It takes something to annoy them enough to make them go, I can't do this anymore. And, and I, really, the, the, the feeling that Billy's talking about in the cinema was happening in the screening that I saw. You know, it was, it was genuinely terrorising okay, gen some parts of the audience. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, j just one thing, William, before, before you leave us, will you please tell Mark to stop going on about The Exorcist? Is he still doing that? Oh. I, I mean, well, look... Uh, he, he knows a quality act when he sees it. But the point is, I, I'd like to make one point w which um, I might have tried before the cricket scores, but, um, which is I don't intend for people to, to walk out, to get up and walk out. But one of the things, to try to explain it to you, I think that audiences are uh, and have been conditioned to be a lot more squeamish today about things. And it's not anything actual that you're seeing that's that's disturbing you it's the overall piece um more exactly. or less the, the way people were disturbed in 1960 by psycho there were people who left the theater walked out and the exorcist you know and and maybe a handful of films uh where people the experience was too intense uh, William, I just say that I, yeah, I agree with that entirely because it's not a visually explicit film. It's it's a thematically intense, and it, that's it's the atmosphere of it, and that's exactly the point. And I think that that's a real triumph. William, well, it's good to talk to you guys. And thank you very I appreciate much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed for your time today, William. 